Hello everybody, and welcome back once again to Let's Play Baldur's Gate the Enhanced Edition. Here we are in the Friendly Arm Inn this morning, after the night before. We finally made it here after a bit of a long journey. And uh, it's 10 a.m. And Imowen is up and at him, ready to uh, explore. She's, uh, of course, curious, bubbly, charismatic, and she wants to talk with some of the locals. It's the first time she's been out on her own from Candlekeep, and she's just wanting to see what's out there. Godan is upstairs, sleeping in, after uh, a few drinks, shall we say, to ease his aching feet. So we're going to have a bit of a bit of a chin round with some of the some of the uh, the tavern folk, starting with Welp. I need some ale. Ugh, look at these forks and tankards. This iron shortage shows no mercy on us drunkards and gormans. Everyone asking, what's wrong with the uh, fork and tankards? They've been made of iron, yet they bend under the weight of this inn's meagre offerings, and the handle breaks on my tankard to spill this rat spit of an ale into my lap. Ugh. Nessie, get me another. Some more information about the iron crisis, not just weapons, but uh, cutlery, tankards, everything is just uh, no good. Pleasure to meet you. I hear there's a lot of money to be made in Nashkel. The people of the town are desperate for mercenaries. From what I hear, their iron mines are infested with monsters. And since the mines are the town's main source of income, well, they're rather eager to get things back to normal. Okay. Seems to be the dominating thought of the region is this iron crisis. Obviously quite a big thing. And here is a lone person stood in the corner. Mm. It's about time. Bring me another flagon of ale. Alright, so this is Dawn, obviously uh, <laughs> mistaking Imuin for a staff member, and she ever so politely is going to explain that uh, he obviously has her mistaken for somebody else. Then why do you bother me? Be gone. Okay. I don't think she quite put it like that, but yeah, she's going to uh, quickly retreat <laughs> away from the rather nasty, uh, nasty half orc that he is. So he is called Dawn Ilkhan, and apparently we may stumble across him again at some point. Okay. Everyone just going across to this uh, yes. lone male stood sort of just looking a little bit absent-minded to be fair. Ah, a new face in this cloistered place. Stand by my side and let's talk for a while. Friendly face. Everyone always up for a bit of a bit of a talk. Asking what brings him here. I was an apprentice blacksmith under Tehron Fairim in Berghost. With the iron situation being what it is, however. I thought I'd better head somewhere else. Waterdeep, maybe. Tayrom's having enough trouble making a go of it as it is. Mm, so again, more reference to the Iron Crisis. Playing with the... I say playing, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Affecting people's livelihood, the economy suffering. It's just one big tragedy, isn't it? Okay, so everybody else seems to be in, in, in couples. I don't think she wants to go and interfere with people who are already in conversation. This is the kitchen area. Yes. Hey, you stays out of my kitchen. You mess up my art. Someday, I's gonna cook for the Duke himself. Bet you there's less fist fights in the palace, so you can enjoy a meal from start to finish. You fool adventurers better be responsible out there. <laughs> and uh, she doesn't want to talk. Right, okay. So we got a uh, some kind of a shelf there. We have a chest in the corner, but I don't anticipate uh, looting the thing in the middle of plain sight. Okay, so we know that Khalid and Jahira are here. We spoke, spoke to them yesterday, just before going to bed. So we'll speak to them when we're good and ready. This way. Okay, 
So we uh, return, go down is finally risen from his pit. Speed. Right, what's this then? And before heading out, he's going to uh, just do a little bit of room inspection, shall we call it. Make sure that we haven't been ripped off in terms of the quality of our room in comparison to the others. Okay, well that's looking very good. Looking very good indeed. And what about your room, guys? Is it, was it up to standard? Was it up to standard? Let's hope so. Oh, what's this? A chest? <laughs> Upon his arrival at the Friendly Arm Inn, Godan couldn't help but purchase several flagons of bitter black ale to assist in soothing his aching joints following the long journey from Candlekeep. The multi stout flavours infused with a hint of caramel and finished off with a bitter aftertaste certainly hit the spot, and after his third flagon he turned his attention onto conversation with the new arrivals. It was under the impression that Montero and Zar were friends, assuming that the mere silence during the journey was a result of tiredness. However, the scathing looks that they shot each other over the table suggested that they weren't quite so comfortable in each other's company. Alright, so here is a character here, Un Un Unshi. Unshay. You cannot get better than the stability stone walls provide. Have you heard? There's a rogue ogre with a belt fetish to the south of the Friendly Arm Inn. I had to bargain my new girdle of piercing for my life out there. Wasn't even interested in an autographed copy of my book. Hey, if you can get that belt back to me, I'd be mighty grateful. Okay, so, uh,. A rogue ogre. And that is Unshe, a dwarven cleric. Has. I assume it's a her. Has her belt. Yeah, it's a her. Right, well, we'll keep an eye out. So just south of the friendly arm. Godan will continue with his room inspections. With his lips loosened by the bitter black, Godam presses a conversation with Montseron and Tsar. He tries to glean information about the couple's past, but is cut off quite abruptly by Montseron, who threatens to punch his lights out if Godam doesn't change the topic of conversation. And from the thunderous look in the halfling's face, he certainly isn't joking. Godam motioned to rise from his chair, outraged at being spoken to in such a manner, but is quickly pacified by Imuan who places a hand on his leg and gives him one of her looks. He sits down I'm muttering to himself and orders another drink. In an attempt to lift the sudden tension in the air, Imran asks Zar about their interest in the Iron Crisis, and in particular their urgent need to head to Nashkel. Zar explains that they have been employed by a group of people to investigate the matter, but beyond that, the necromancer's lips remain sealed. Well, partially sealed, because whilst at the table, he constantly rambles to himself in numerous strange voices, leading Godan to surmise that he must be completely mad. He just hopes that Zar has some modicum of skill when it comes to fighting and casting spells. Brief introductions with Khalid and Jahira, a serving of beef stew, a one bit of black later, and it was time to retire for the day. Two separate quarters were ordered, and Godan was mightily impressed with the large airy rooms on offer, and even more so by the soft beds in which he quickly sank into. Despite the comfort of the inn's beds, it took Godan some time to drift off to sleep, as his mind constantly returned to the events that transpired the night before, and he half expected someone to burst through the door, eager to take his life again. The bitter blacks worked their magic, however, and eventually he drifted off to sleep. Right, so here's Landrin. A pleasure it is to meet you. Hey, I've got a teeny bit of a spider infestation happening in my cellar in Berraghost. I was on my way to the gate to get some poison, but this would be a lot easier on my legs. 
You'll know the house when you see it. Strike to the west of the jovial juggler inn. Bring back their bodies to prove you've done the job, and I'll give you a hundred gold pieces. If you could, please bring my husband's old boots and my old bottle of wine back as well, and I'll throw in something extra. So also a, another quest here, Landrin's Possessions, a gnome. That's another flea male as well. Apparently fled her home due to a recent spider infestation. Okay, bring back the bodies, bring back some boots and her wine, and well, we could be quids in. Sounds right up Godan's alley. Room inspection's over. Godan meets back up with Imowen and asks Sorted. her to accompany him outside you for a brief exploration Sorted. of the friendly arm and the surrounding area, giving him time to gather his thoughts and think about where to go next. Go on, then. Imowen gladly agrees, and the two what of them head outside. The Friendly Arm Inn is a walled hamlet located several days Spend north of Berigost, with I'm the most it. prominent building being the large stone keep containing the inn itself. Also present in the hamlet is a temple to Gal Glittergold, the primary deity of the gnomes. Some gardens, some stables, a horse pond and caravan wagon sheds. The hamlet also features several houses and a large meeting hall with a grand, many-pillared entrance. The Friendly Arm Inn is a safe haven on the coastway you and there is an agreement the among the guests that peace is maintained within the hamlet. The peace within the Friendly Arm is also sustained due to the reputation of its hosts Bentley and Galana Mirashade, who are former adventurers, and the rumour that the barmaids that work within are actually iron golems concealed by powerful illusions. The keep formerly was a stronghold of an evil priest of Baal who was destroyed in undead form by a group of adventurers that were led by the famed thief and illusionist Bentley Mirashade. Upon clearing the keep, he set his comrades to work converting and renovating it into what it is today, a fortified way stop providing shelter to travellers on the coastway. The fabled peace within the friendly arm was breached recently when a murder occurred. The murderer was apprehended rather quickly with the magical assistance of a mysterious cloaked figure. Gossipers say that they could have sworn that the figure was none less than the Archmage of Waterdeep himself, Kelburn Blackstaff Arunson. This rumour compounds the theory that Bentley can use his contacts from his adventuring days and call forth aid from powerful persons, and even that some sort of gate or portal exists within the friendly arm, perhaps in the cellars of the inn itself. Right, so before heading out and exploring the surrounding area around the friendly arm inn, allowing go down a little bit of time to think about what he wants to do next, uh, speaking with one of the guards first, on, sort of ran in last night without speaking to them, hell-bent on get, getting some rest, finding the inn so we could have a drink this morning. We have a bit more time on our hands. I should have joined the army. Welcome to the Friendly Arm. I trust you know the rules of conduct within. Rules of conduct? We weren't made aware of any rules. Perhaps rules is a touch too formal. It is unwritten, but accepted. That while herein you will act with the utmost of civility to all other guests, this is neutral ground, and all grievances are left at the gates. If the grievances come in, then you will go out. Enjoy your stay. Oh, go Dan's in luck, isn't he? Grievances? We haven't brought any grievances to them. Theft? Perfectly fine. Godan bids the guard a good day and sets off on his exploration of the ground surrounding the hamlet. He's barely a few paces into his stride when he notices a glinting object at the foot of a tree. Wow. Look at that. Tiny, tiny little, uh, little nook here. How small is that? Obviously in the original Baldur's Gate you didn't have an inspect key, so finding these little hidey holes here will have been extremely, extremely difficult, now impossible. So, uh... Wow. Sorted. In some form of a ring. Oh, 
The ring is engraved with rune-like carvings and even someone as clueless about magic as Godan can sense an aura of power within the ring. He hands it over to Imowen, hoping that her studies in Candlekeep may have led her to reading about an artifact such as this, but alas, she informs him that she can't discern the ring's true power. Imowen gives the ring back to Godan, who places it into his pack, hoping that its true identity will be ascertained later with some magical assistance from Tsar. The pair continue on their journey past the exterior walls of the hamlet in silence, the both of them clearly enjoying the fresh air and the opportunity to enjoy the delights of the outdoors. The calls of the birds, the rustling of the foliage caused by the gentle breeze and the various colours of the landscape. Being out in the open is almost enough to help Godan forget his newfound troubles and he wishes that he could be experiencing this new pastime under much more favourable circumstances. He tries to push the negative thoughts to the back of his mind so that he can simply enjoy the current moment, but just as he does so, the tranquillity is disturbed by a loud shout in the distance. Well, so here we have Hobgoblin. Sorted. Spit. I'm on it. Oh, and here he comes. You rang. Uh oh. <laughs> I've done had enough of this. Uh oh. Getting a bit frisky there, going after him. Oh! But go down, I think. Might have just clipped him in the back. Let's have a look. Yep, 10 damage. He he turned to go after Imowen. Go down, chopping him in the back. Go on then. Right, what's this then? Spit it out. Sorted. And here's another one. Oh, wait a minute. I think I'm using Godan's throwing axes. That's not what I'm going to be doing here. Wasting them against weak opponents. You rang. Sorted. Number one lesson. Make sure you have the right weapon selected go before you go into battle. Right, what's this then? How can this be? Hobgoblins on the road just outside the friendly arm in. Right, this place is this supposed then? to be a safe haven. What kind of safe haven allows its patrons to be accosted by goblinoids? This will certainly be reported to Bentley on Godan's return, and not to mention he'll be seeking either a discount or a reward for dealing with the threat. Maybe Bentley should put his Iron Golem barmaids to better use and simply strutting about the inn trying to convince the tavern folk to part with further coin by fluttering their eyelashes. Just as Godan's shock at being attacked on the road subsides, he can't believe his eyes. Another group of hobgoblins. You sorted. Okay, here's another one. Woof. Nice. Oh, and another. Bentley Mirashade really should employ some patrols around here. A few unsuspecting guests wanting a morning stroll getting attacked by hobgoblins is not good for business. Don't worry, mate. We won't spare no one. That includes you. Go on, then. I'm on it. Getting a few gems here. I'll take one more helmet as well. The reason why I'm not collecting the uh, leather armor is that they're so. I think they're worth like one gold. To be fair, I suppose it's better than nothing, but hardly worth schlepping it about. Sorted. 